Hey guys, what's up? Uh, been wanting to rewatch the whole Hellraiser franchise recently because Hellraiser Judgment just came out, I think last month. So I've been, uh, uh, and usually when a sequel comes out that I'm really hyped for to a big franchise, just something in me, I have to rewatch the entire franchise in order to actually watch the new sequel for some reason. It's just the way I've always been. Like when Leatherface came out, I had to rewatch all the Texas Chainsaw movies and so on, so on, whatever. But, um, <clears throat> so that's the case with this new, uh, Hellraiser fran uh, sequel. And I'm going to have to do it for Children of the Corn because the new Children of the Corn, uh, just released too. But I actually, at Grindhouse Video in Tampa, I got the Hellraiser Scarlet Box from Arrow and uh, got it signed by Doug Bradley because he's realistically the fran Hellraiser franchise is just my favorite franchise growing up as far as the main ones go. I just love everything about them pretty much, but I'm going to get into more. I don't want to give a lot away in case people haven't seen them, which would be shocking, but just in case there are people that haven't seen them, I want them to experience it, you know, going fresh in, whatever. So this is more of just a, like my thoughts, my opinion on how good the, each films are in the franchise. And in this case, like a little review of the box set, and the transfers and the uh, extras. But um, I'm going to start this first one off with Hellraiser Part 1. And um, I'll just, uh, I'll come back with another video for Part 2 and Part 3. And uh I'll, each video of each one, like I'm doing Hellraiser 1 this time, I'll get into all the features and all that for each one. So uh, starting it off with Hellraiser 1, and this is the case that they give you for part 1. And uh, I, this was the first Hellraiser movie I ever saw. And if I'm going to be like 100% honest, it's actually like one of my least favorite of the franchise for some reason. It's just, it's kind of draggy to me. I mean, the Cenobites are realistically only in it for, what, I think, like, seven minutes, if that. Um, but it is cool seeing Andrew Robinson from uh, Scorpio Killer from Dirty Harry and stuff, seeing him in some movies. Because at this point, Julia was supposed to be the main villain, which I'm glad they didn't make her the main villain throughout the whole series, because... She's one of my actually least favorite parts about the franchise, oddly enough. And I know that's blasphemy for a lot of people, but it is what it is. Um, I gotta say the transfer that Arrow made for this one was slightly disappointing in my eyes. It just wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. Um, there are some scenes that stand out, like when Frank is being resurrected from the floorboards. Looks really good, uh... That scene's never looked better. Uh, there are some good scenes with Pinhead and all that where it looks kind of really detailed and stuff, but uh, there's a lot of thick, thick grain in this, and I'm sure that has to do with the film stock. I haven't seen Hellraiser in a long time, and I never watched it on Blu-ray. I never got, I think, uh, what, Anchor Bay put it out? I th yeah, Anchor Bay, I think, put it out. I never got that Blu-ray, and I think it's out of print now, but... Uh, I will say, like, when I watch this in the future, I will put on this Arrow release just because it, I'm sure it does look better than the DVD. Just the scenes that do pop out really do pop out, but sometimes the grain does get really excessive, but, I mean, it's an old movie. It's, you know, it's low budget. I'm sure it had cheaper film stock and stuff, so it's just... This was a good starting off point for the franchise, I'll say that. It's, uh, if you're gonna watch it, you might as well pop this one in, too. Clive Barker. This is the only one he directed, um, and I think that's why it has more of a slow, kind of poetic type, just story. Like, it just, you could tell it's Clive Barker, you know, and, uh, you know, I got, that's the only disappointing thing was just the transfer was just kind of disappointing to me, and um, that's just the way it is, I mean, but... I didn't, really didn't get this set for the transfers. I actually, which that was just icing on the top, the HD transfers, but I actually got this for the special features because there was a documentary put out in the UK uh, called Leviathan, the story of Hellraiser 1 and 2. And it was like a four hour documentary on the making of those movies. And I wasn't able to get it. I don't have an all region player or nothing like that. And I think it was only available in the UK on a non-USA format. 
or yeah, pretty sure that's what it was. And I really wanted that release. And this era release includes that documentary broken up into three different parts for each uh, release. So this actually has the first hour and a half of that documentary dedicated to this movie. Um, it's a, it's an hour and 29 minutes and it's really thorough, really well done, you know, basically for this whole arrow release, it's worth it for that documentary alone. Um, this also includes a 26 minute interview with Sean Chapman, the guy who played Frank. Um, so far that's 26 minutes. So it's actually, he goes into good detail and depth with that. And, uh, Another special feature, because I only wrote down special features that really stuck out to me and that make this set worth it, and uh, Soundtrack Hell, which is brand new, and I gotta say the Sean Chapman interview is brand new, and the Soundtrack Hell, which is an interview with the lead singer of a band, Coil, who was originally supposed to do the score for Hellraiser, and it's actually pretty freaky. It's a really good score. It would have been interesting to see Hellraiser with that score, for sure. Um, and it has vintage interviews, the old stuff from the old uh, DVD. Who put that out? I don't know, Image, yeah. Image put the DVD out. But it has two commentaries, and they're old commentaries. Uh, I listened to one of them, and that was with just Clive Barker. And it was a decent interview. Or it was a decent commentary. I mean, the documentary, Leviathan, kind of tells you all the stuff that Clive Barker is talking about on this uh, commentary. So it is what it is. It's cool to have. I wish um, Arrow would have, you know, got them to do new commentaries, stuff that wasn't available on uh, the old releases, you know, because they already went all out with this set. So it would have been nice if they had uh, uh, new commentaries. But overall, like I said, this was one of my least favorite ones out of the fa Hellraiser franchise, and I know that's an unpopular opinion. But I'm still really impressed with this disc. Uh, the special features alone, I mean, when you add it all up, you got easily like three and a half, four hours of features just for part one, you know? So I, I'm happy with the overall presentation, the overall packages of this. Now, uh, I am going to re be reviewing the whole entire Hellraiser franchise. I'm going to do uh, part two next and then uh, part three and so on and so on. But um, I have them all on Blu-ray except Debtor, um, so that one I'll have to review on DVD, unfortunately. But um, yeah, I'm excited to watch them all, and I'm super stoked to watch Hellraiser Judgment. I've heard actually really good things about it, and I've heard bad things about it, but you know, the ones that people say are the worst in the franchise are actually the ones I end up liking the most for some reason. So we'll see how it goes, but uh, anyways guys, I'll see y'all next video with uh, Hellbound Hellraiser Part 2. Peace.